You're going to need um, a squeeze object, and that can be a yoga block, an exercise ball, or a pillow. And let's just start with that. We're also going to need a um, long resistance band, which could, you could, um, for one, one thing at least, you could use a circle band if that's all you have. And then some very light dumbbells. And light dumbbells because we're working very small muscles. So let's take our squeeze object and let's just activate this shoulder while we're talking about um, the chest and the heart opening. So put the squeeze object under the arm, stand tall in your mountain pose, engage that core, so pelvic floor, glutes, abs, back, inner thigh, all engaged, and just squeeze your squeeze object right underneath that arm. Now, if you have trouble standing up tall or you have trouble with your head protruding like forward, like a, you know, like that little turtle push forward, then go put your back against a wall and you can have your hips and your shoulders and try to push your head back your feet don't have to be against the wall. They can be out a little bit. But um, we're going to squeeze that object and we're going to try to stand really tall. So if you need a wall to help you, that's perfectly fine. So throughout our life, we get very pulled forward in the shoulders. Think about it when you're driving, when you're doing dishes, when you're folding laundry, when you're working at your desk, when you're over a computer, when you're looking down at a cell phone. All of those things pull these shoulders forward, pull our head forward and sink in our chest. And so physically we get very tight in the chest and overstretched and weak in the back. So um, we have just three little rotator cuff muscles right here and then we have one that goes under the arm. Or, sorry, we have three back here, one goes under the arm and we have one on top of the shoulder. We're gonna isolate those today because those do help pull our shoulders back into position. And these are really easy to hurt muscles. Um, so we need to keep them strong. And the reason that, one of the reasons that they're easy to hurt is because of that um, misalignment in the shoulders and allowing those to be weak and overstretched. So if we can strengthen them and pull them back into place, that's really good. Now let's switch arms. So energetically, our chest, collapses our heart collapses because of grief and sadness um, not having connection with others and maybe not having connection with the earth the heart is all about connections um, and I recently had a teacher tell me that love really comes from the emotional gut and not the heart um, but you know, we all feel that love in our heart and that heartache. So um, maybe we feel it in both. I don't know, but maybe everybody's a little different too. So sometimes when our heart gets broken, that, that collapses, that is definitely where we store that grief. So we want to work on just cracking that open a little bit, pulling all that open and allowing that energy to flow again and bringing that love and light forward. All right, so let's get started we're going to use this um, pillow or squeeze object or yoga block in a moment on the floor um, for some heart opening so let's put that down on the mat here and we're going to need our long band and we're going to need a couple sets of light dumbbells all you need but not sets all you need is a single dumbbell down on the floor so let's stand nice and tall and reach and stretch and open through those arms you can do this with your back against the wall again if you've had trouble with slumping forward or your head pushing forward put your back against the wall your feet don't have to be against the wall the feet can actually help you push back against the wall and just breathe and reach open through those arms so energetically, that hip flexor has a lot to do with our um, emotions. So if we energetically have been locked down, let's go ahead and open this hip flexor and then open the heart. Big, deep, full breaths. You're keeping the core muscles engaged. You're balancing and just pulling those fingers open. Pulling those palms open. 
lengthening through those arms. Feel the front of those shoulders open. Pull the heart forward. Big deep breath into the front of the heart. And then let's stand up and hug a tree. So we're still standing upright. Stand upright, but hug a tree. So don't um, bend forward in that. Just stand upright and hug your arms around a trunk of a tree. Breathe into the back of that heart. Giving the heart some space in the back. And then let's step the other foot forward with the opposite leg back. Find that hip flexor. Get that hip flexor lunge stretch and then pull the thumbs back, opening the front of the heart again. Add the throat to that, open the throat. Breathe and open. And come back forward, roll those shoulders. Now let's set, go to mountain, inhale up, let's dive down, bend the knees, put the stomach on the thighs, grab the earth or the legs and gently straighten the back of those legs. Let the head hang, shake the head out. And then walk back into down dog. Settle those feet, breathe, spread those fingers. Drop to all fours, cat-cow, moving through the spine. Now bring the hands, make sure they're directly underneath the shoulders. And we're gonna do a little arm punch here where the shoulders, the shoulders um, just move in the socket up and down. This can help strengthen those shoulders. Up and down. Now, if you want to make that more difficult, walk the knees back, keep the hands right there, tuck the hips in and do that. And if you want to make that harder, curl the toes under and hold the legs up in a arm plank. Don't lock the elbows and do that shoulder press. Great job. And then let's have a seat. So those of you that have the big stability ball, you could tuck that big ball right behind you here and just lie back over the ball. It does help even more so if you put like a couch or a chair um, back here, like maybe against the wall even, something back there to hold the ball, then the big ball between you and that object, and then lie back over it, you can do that. Or those of us without the ball, we're gonna sit comfortably, however that is for you, sit comfortably. And we're gonna put one hand on one leg and it can be the opposite leg and pull this thumb back. So take your thumb and pull it back and open the heart and the throat. Sitting up tall through the spine. When we rotate the spine, it rotates from the bottom upward. And switch. Switch. And 
Sit up tall, roll those shoulders, roll the other way, bring the hands underneath the shoulders and look right and left, and then do one ear to one shoulder and the other ear to the other shoulder. Working through any tension or stress there. So a lot of times because we're pulled forward in the front, our neck is where we have the pain. And so pulling those shoulder blades back, squeeze them together, open the heart, and then stretch the neck. You'll feel that stretch so much better. Helping to release that tension and stress. And do the other side. Great. So we're going to use our, our squeeze object to help us open the heart. You can do the big ball or the exercise, the exercise ball, yoga ball, Pilates ball. This is um, really good. This feels really good um, because it gives enough pressure, but it's not so hard as a yoga block, but it doesn't give as much as a pillow. But you could use a bolster, anything that you can put right underneath your back, behind your, um, behind your back here, like between your shoulder blades, behind the heart. We're gonna place that object on the floor or if you have the ball, you're gonna hold on to it till you get down there. But you can place your yoga blocks, your bolsters, a couple blankets stacked up, anything like that right here on the mat. And we want that um, maybe around the bra strap line of a woman or between the shoulder blades. Um, keep the natural arch in the low back. And then we can prop the elbows up underneath the shoulders, point the toes and open that throat so you, that's a propped up version like a modified half fish pose or you can lie back over that object pull the shoulder blades together turn the palms up and just open up if you have a bolster you might take your arms wide like a t and we're going to rest for a moment here opening the heart the stomach chakra and the throat Gently pushing the head into the earth. Don't do anything that hurts. It all. If you have yoga blocks and that's it, you might do two yoga blocks, one end to one end underneath there. That can feel decent when you have enough width on them. Breathing deeply into the heart center. And then let's bring the arms in. Use the elbows to help you come back up. And let's set that aside. So it's really important before you work your rotator cuff to stretch open that chest. And another good location to stretch the chest is in a doorway, like a football goal post with the elbows and arms on the door frame and just walk forward or you can do like a wide T if it's a wide door frame and walk forward until you feel the front of that chest and the front of those shoulders opening. So let's lie on our side with our bottom arm underneath our head as a pillow. Take a light dumbbell with the elbow bent and we're going to open this hand towards the ceiling and then towards the stomach. So keep the elbow glued to the side. 
needs to be a really light dumbbell. Try to keep the wrist straight. Try to keep the head straight in alignment with the hips. Breathe, try to be comfortable and work behind that shoulder. So strengthening that rotator cuff. Now, if you've had an injury, you might not be able to lift it as high. You might also do this with no weight to try to get more range of motion. So the range of motion is more important than the weight. So if you can't lift it up um, very high, you might just work with no weight, trying to lift that hand as high as you can, not forcing it, no pain, and just working on that range of motion and you squeezing it without the added weight. So you'll do this up to 20. And we're not gonna switch sides yet. Take some nice deep breaths. Try to relax the other body parts. You gotta keep the core tight and you've got to keep that shoulder nice and strong and that arm strong, but everything else can kind of relax. The legs can relax except for the core engagement part and the neck can relax except for just keeping everything in good alignment. Great, and when you get that done, you can use the same weight. You probably feel that. You can use the same weight or a little heavier weight with the arm straight on your side. So with the arm on your side, we're gonna raise that up about 45 degrees. And we'll do up to 20 of these. The Mayo Clinic did a big study about 15 years ago or so on um, what works and activates the rotator cuff muscles the best. And they decided that this exercise was the best. They used all kinds of um, imaging to watch the muscles as they worked through several shoulder exercises and they found that this one activated the rotator cuff the best. So this is a good one to do weekly. Do as many of those as you can up to 20. We're not gonna do the other arm yet. Just hold on for a second. Let's lie back. On our back, knees bent, take the arms nice and wide with the palms up, anchor those arms and gently rock the knees side to side, breathing into the rib cage. I want you to feel the ribs expanding with every inhale and falling with every exhale. And just work on giving the heart some space on the right and left side of the heart. Reaching through the fingertips. Working through any low back tension. Gently push the head into the earth. Push the head into the earth. Keep the natural arch in the neck. Open that throat. I have an important voice. I have an important voice. Say that to yourself. I have an important voice. I am building my light within. I am building my light within. I am building my light within. Now let's take the band. Make sure that the dumbbells are, are not um, in our line of movement. We're going to take the straight band. We're going to hold it right over the chest. And we're going to pull that open. Nice and wide open. Let me sit up and show you that. So if I were lying on my back, we're gonna pull this straight open like a T. So I call this open T. Keep the wrist straight, don't lock the elbows, keep the head in good alignment. And then the core engagement, core and shoulders work really well together. They're, they help each other. So you could hold tabletop while you do this, pulling that band apart, squeezing behind those shoulders, squeezing the shoulder blades together, keeping the core activated. You can squeeze the squeeze object between your inner thighs. <clears throat> Keep pushing the head back into the earth, keeping the natural arch in the neck. Squeeze behind the arms, behind the shoulder blades. Keep the wrist straight. Don't lock the elbows, but keep the arms straight.
great job and then set that aside and we'll go now switching to that other side so we're going to do those two rotator cuff exercises on the other side make sure your hips to your head are in a straight line your core is engaged your bottom arm is a pillow underneath that head you're comfortable elbow bent by the side and let's open that hand up towards the heavens, keeping the elbow glued to the body. Breathe. Squeeze behind that shoulder blade. Focus on that shoulder as it works. Go nice and slow. Nothing should hurt. Remember to let go of the dumbbell and just do it with the hand. If you're not getting full range of motion, just working on that range of motion. Or you could also lighten the weight. And then relax that arm. Change weights if you'd like to. We're going to switch to that straight arm raise. Keep the wrist straight. We only come up 45 degrees. We don't touch the hip again. Take some nice, good, deep breaths. Enjoy being on the earth, letting the earth hold you. Feeling grounded and connected to that earth. Connecting to the earth is part of our heart. Think about the color green, the grass, the trees, the bushes, everything else in the world that's green, connecting to all that greenery of the earth. I am grounding, I am grounding, I am grounding. Good things to tell yourself. And then we'll grab that band again, lie on our back. This time, let me sit up so I can show you this from sit sitting up. You're sitting up, or you're lying on your back, sorry, and your elbows are bent, and you're holding the palms up with the band. We're going to pull that band apart like that. It's a very small move, so I don't know if you can see that, but pulling that band apart. So I'll talk you through it. Lie on your back. Keep the natural arch in the neck. You can have the feet on the floor. You can do tabletop again. The elbows are bent by the sides. The palms are towards the face. It's a very small movement and just pull that band apart, really tucking those shoulder blades into the body, keeping the natural curves of the spine, gently pushing the head back. Option to have that tabletop and pull that apart. It, it might only even be half an inch of movement, but you're pulling that apart. Whew, the way I feel that. Hopefully you do too. So that tells me that I've been neglecting my rotator cuff a little bit and I need to do these more often. All right, now let's work on um, our last chest opening stretch. So you could um, sit on your big uh, stability ball and roll out till your head's on the ball and just open in a back bend. If you um, are really flexible, you could do a full back bend. You could do a fish pose. Or what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna talk you through, is on the stomach. We're on our stomach. We're gonna extend one arm out by the side, spread the fingers. The fingers are below the shoulder joint, and we're going to roll onto that side, put the head down, kick that leg back, and breathe. Now, you can use that top arm to help push you back into it, or you can wrap that top arm around your low back. Big deep chest breath, heart opening, belly opening, throat opening, 
And then when you're ready, you're gonna switch sides, extend that other arm out, roll onto that side, open that chest. And then back onto the stomach, arms in football goal pose, turn the head one way and breathe, and then turn the head the other way and breathe. And grounding. And grounding. And connecting to that earth. And connecting to the earth. Namaste, my friends. So if you identified any of those exercises that really stood out to you, um, pulling the band apart, uh, the open T, squeezing the ball under the arm, um, the Mayo Clinic one with the 45 degree shoulder raise or the open and close with that dumbbell. Those are um, very isolating rotator cuff exercises. If any of those stood out to you, that's a sign that you probably need them and you should do them every few days or at least make sure you're getting them at least once a week. I appreciate you doing this with me. Continue to keep opening the heart and opening the chest. Use those big stability balls. Use your door frames. Use the earth to help you connect. Use the greenery to energetically open that heart and connect to the earth through that greenery. Thank you so much.